A pastoral letter from Bishop O'Connell, Monday Musings. Pastoral letters are a way that bishops in their diocese can have the opportunity to speak on some topic of importance in their diocese. And according to TrentonMonitor.com, which is the website um, for the Diocese of Trenton, uh, this is Bishop O'Connell's third pastoral letter, which we'll talk about. I got to it a little late. You may have already seen it. It's been on our parish website. If you didn't, uh, just a video about this pastoral letter. Um, the, his first pastoral letter was written in the year 2012, and it corresponded with the year of faith that was instituted by Pope Francis, and that pastoral letter was One Holy Catholic Apostolic, I Believe We Believe. And the year of faith, if you don't remember, the year of faith was um, to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Second Vatican Council, and it was also the 20th anniversary of the publication of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. His second pastoral letter was called Mercy and Truth, Mercy and Truth Shall Meet, and that was in 2015, and it was at the observance of the Holy Year of Mercy, which Pope Francis proclaimed in 2015. Bishop O'Connell has instituted his third pastoral letter, and this is titled Behold I am with you always, which comes from Matthew 28 20, and it's a pastoral letter on the presence of God by Bishop O'Connell. It is in three parts. He does begin with an introduction, and he talks about how obviously social distancing has become normative for us now because we've been going through this pandemic um, for so long, but he does talk about how it's, um, you know, it's not good or healthy for us to be alone for extended periods of time. And he does mention that um, well, he doesn't mention this, but obviously we are gradually going to get out of this pandemic, and he does bring some notice, Bishop O'Connell brings some notice to the fact that, um, you know, for a lot of people, even as we begin to gradually open things up, that this living in isolation is their normative way of living, both before and after their pandemic, and so we should always be aware of that. He says, in my ministry as a priest, I have encountered many people for whom social distancing has been their way of life for a long time and not by choice. Society has left them alone. The homeless sleeping on the streets in our cities, the elderly abandoned to facilities who never have a call or a visit, drug addicts wandering from fix to fix, living in an isolated world, the poor, the outcast, the bully, the marginalized, those living alone, quarantined for whatever reason. Social distance and isolation and sentences are imposed by society upon them without parole. And so it is important for us. I've probably seen this most in nursing homes. So often when you go to nursing homes, you do see people who are, you know, basically have no contact um, with family or friends and they are left in that place of isolation. And so we should always be aware that, again, things are gradually going to open up from this pandemic, but that shouldn't lead us to, um, you know, forget about those who do live in isolation, even when we're not in a global pandemic. So the, um, this letter does go in three parts. The first part is on the presence of God. And he does talk about, um, he states his purpose. He says, I simply write this, uh, I write this simply as a believer and as a pastor of others who believe in the Catholic Church to affirm the fundamental and non-negotiable belief that we share, namely that God exists. And so his purpose is um, to uh, talk about the presence of God. And he does mention um, elsewhere in this, stock, in this pastoral letter that he's not going to, um, he's not here to try and prove the existence of God, even though we believe that is non-negotiable. He's not here to prove the existence of God. He's just there to affirm that. And he does talk about, and you know, he mentions how there's lots of places you can go if you want to um, get so, so quote-unquote proofs of the existence of God. Then in this section on the presence of God, he talks about how God is omnipresent, meaning all-present. He's omnipotent, meaning all-powerful, and he's omniscient, meaning all-knowing. And so those are some of the characteristics of God. This section I found to be, um, the second section I found to be particularly helpful. It's titled Practice of the Presence of God. And basically what he's affirming in this section of the pastoral letter is that if we want to um, live in the presence of God, then we have to practice just like we would anything else. He said, for the believer, we may ask a similar question. How do I get to know God in my life? The answer is the same. Practice, practice, practice. And so he does, in this section, he does quote from Brother Lawrence of the Resurrection, who has a book titled The Practice of the Presence of God. And so, you know, he mentions in this how you know, if we're going to be united to God, then we have to get used to practicing on being in the presence of God. It's, you know, it doesn't just come automatically. It is something that we do have to practice. 
Then he talks about living in the presence of God. And in this section, he talks about how we can go for some time without food and water, but we can't go um, for very long without oxygen. And he quotes Padre Pio, who said, prayer is the oxygen of the soul. And so in this section, he's talking about how we have to continually be living in the presence of God. And that that's something that's not something we just do and then stop, but it's something that's meant to be characteristic of our entire life, how we're always in the presence of God. And so then he does have a conclusion, and the bishop is um, Irish. I'm sure many of us are aware of that. And so he does close with a um, prayer from St. Patrick, so I'll close with that. And this week, we, um, I believe it's on Wednesday, we celebrate the Lenten commemoration of St. Patrick. So we'll close with this prayer. As I rise today, may the strength of God pilot me, the power of God uphold me, the wisdom of God, God, the wisdom of God guide me. May the eye of God look before me, the ear of God hear me, the word of God speak to me. May the hand of God protect me, the way of God be before me, the shield of God defend me, the host of God save me. May Christ shield me today, Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me. Christ is on my right, Christ is on my left. Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit. Christ when I stand, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me. Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me. Christ in, the, in every eye that sees me. Christ in every ear that hears me. And he just concludes with, my sisters and brothers live in the presence of God. And so um, it is a worthwhile read. I'll include a link if you're watching on Instagram. You have to or any other platforms. You have to go to the YouTube channel and I'll include a link. There is also um, a link on the parish website. So just some Monday musings. It's a very worthwhile read, very accessible. And so I would just encourage you to read this pastoral letter from Bishop O'Connell on um, the presence of God. See you. God bless.